Good evening. It is September the 16th, 6 p.m., and we are here at 15 Minutes of Prayer, First Baptist Church, Auburn, Michigan. And I just so appreciate any of those of you who join us on these Wednesday nights for prayer. I'm going to start with a song which I really think focuses our thoughts and our eyes, and it's a simple song. It's in our hymnal. If you happen to have one at home, it's number six in the hymnal. I doubt if you really need it. But it, be, it goes like this. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Hi, Gene. Good to see you tonight. Spend a moment just in prayer, thanking God that he is who he is, that he is our rock, our fortress, our redeemer. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful that the words of that song are so true. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. You are our rock. You're our fortress. You're our deliverer. And, and it doesn't matter what we're going through. You're always there walking with us. As the great psalm says, Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow, you are with us. And whatever that shadow might be, of course, in the psalm, it's a shadow of death, but it might be the shadow of depression, the shadow of struggle, the shadow of fear, the shadow of uncertainty, the, the shadow of financial struggle. Whatever it is, whatever that shadow is, yea, we walk through the valley of the shadow. You are with us, and we praise you so much for that. And so as we gather, as we start tonight, we do want to praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. What a great opportunity we have to share. Hey, Pam, good to see you and Dave with us, joining us. I want to pray for general things tonight. First of all, I want to pray for our families. And, and each of you, I want you to pray for your family, whether it's a biological family or friends that you consider family, our church, who's it's a fa who it's a family. The Bible says and, and, in 1 Corinthians 13, thir in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, Verse 13, and now these remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And, and I've read articles that talk about the fact that sometimes there's fear going on right now. Hi, Elizabeth. Good to see you, too. But we remember that we, as the family of God, encourage one another. We are the ones who spread hope. We are the ones who spread faith and love. So let's just take a minute and pray that we would be the catalyst for faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these, of course, is love. And it's our love for others, but it's also the love that Christ gives us, not just for ourselves, but then to disseminate out too. So join me in prayer as we pray for our families. Again, biological families, church families, work families, uh, groups of friends, family, whatever you consider family, and there may be many. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you just praising you and praying for our families. And, and for myself, I pray for Leslie and for Nicholas in Denver and Yantina and Caitlin, and my, my, my sons, my daughters-in-law, my wife. Lord, provide for their need. Go abundantly above and beyond for each of us. I think of the, the times in Scripture where you provided abundantly for you fed the 5,000 on five loaves and two fish and picked up 12 baskets full of food. When the disciples threw their nets into the water after not catching anything, they suddenly had over 200 fish in the nets. 
it is not beyond you to supply exceedingly abundantly. And so we pray for our families, we pray for my church family here, the people that I've grown, I have grown to love and have grown to love me and show it in many ways. God bless them. Whatever they might be going through, whatever their need is, whatever their desire is, answer that in the way that is right. We, give, we praise you for the families that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. And then also, why are we here? You know, I, I tell the church that when I came here, I came not because I, I didn't stay because I liked it or because they paid me a lot or whatever. I do like it and they do pay me abundant. They do pay me sufficiently. I'm not, that's not the problem. The point is God called me here. I'm here because this is where God desires and wants me to be. And I can't leave and won't leave until the Lord calls me away. And I think we need to see that in, in all of our lives. Where, where are you with your family and some of you have family that lives close and some of your family is estranged and, and some of you are maybe apart, and, but, but you're here, you're where you are because that's where God has you. And I just think we need to be confident in where we are and don't, and don't wonder, well, what if and if only and why can't I? No, no, God has us here. God has us here. This is the ministry that God gives us, whether we're talking about ministry in the church or ministry in our families or ministry in the communities. This is our ministry. So we really need to pray for, for just our ability to serve God faithfully in wherever he has us, wherever we're planted. So let's just bow in prayer for that at this time. Heavenly Father, what a great opportunity you give us. What great opportunities. Ministering to family, ministering to friends, ministering to the person we run that we see in the store, the, the clerk or the teller at the bank or the waiter or waitress at the at the restaurant. We're just we're there to minister. You have us there for a reason. I, I believe that our lives are purposeful. Sometimes we see dynamic results and sometimes we don't know any results. But I believe that our lives are purposeful. You have us where we are for a specific reason. Lord, we embrace that. We accept that. None of us are probably going to be written up in the latest Impact magazine or the latest news article about someone who changed the world. But God, we are changing our world because you have us where we want to be, where we need to be. So Lord, allow our lives to be impactful here. For me, in my church, or in this church, the church you called me to serve, in my, in my family, Lord, help each of us to find that place and stay there through thick and thin. Through thick and thin, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And I notice some of you are putting up prayer requests. Please continue to do that. We'll save those till the end, but we'll pray for those. So, yes, put those up for sure, because that's part of what this is all about. <clears throat> The next thing I want to pray for is leadership. As a believer, as a Christian, you are a leader. You are, you're leading, and, and you're either leading people to think about Christ and to consider him, or you're leading people away from him. And, and, and in all that is happening in the world today, we need to be leaders, leading people to Jesus. This Sunday, Coming up this week, is the, we're talking about John the Baptist and what his ministry was and part of what he's supposed to do. And, and John, uh, John came to lead people to the Savior, to prepare the way so they could turn to the Savior. That's what we're here to do. We're here to be leaders, leaders leading people to Christ. And it's exciting that many of you who come to church are inviting friends. Some of you who come to church are inviting friends to join us online. Some of you who are joining us online are inviting more friends to join us online. And it's a great thing. And some people watch during the service. And it's great because of Facebook. You can watch it after the service. You can watch it at your leisure. 
And that's an amazing thing. But be the leader that God has called you to be. Step out. Be confident. Be bold. Not in your own abilities or our own abilities, but in what God has asked us to do. So just take a minute now and pray for 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 the ability, the courage, and the wisdom to be the leader that God desires you to be. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, help us be leaders. We want to be the leader that you want us to be. Leaders with our children, leaders with our spouse, leaders at our, at our jobs, leaders with our friends in our neighborhood. Not those who stand up and lord it over others, but those who demonstrate by their life and by their words, and by their actions, a commitment to good, a commitment to right. And yes, ultimately a commitment to Jesus Christ, a commitment to God. In a world that is so unsettled, and yes, sometimes a little bit scary, we still want to be leaders, leading people to the peace that we can have in Christ, the rest that we can have in Jesus. And particularly for maybe for people who are at, who are at risk in whatever, we just pray, Lord, that we could demonstrate to them what Jesus can do in their lives. What a great opportunity we have to be leaders in the kingdom of God. So God, give us the wisdom, give us the courage, help us to step out and do all that you would have us to do. We pray in your powerful name, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, time is rapidly getting away at 15 minutes. doesn't last very long. We have a request here for to pray for Nels Larson and his physical struggle. I know he's been dealing with it for quite some time. And so pray for him, pray for endurance through this. I don't know where the health comes if it's, I don't believe that it's curable, but I think they're treating it. But just pray for Nels. It's hard. Also pray for her, his caregiver, Linda, his wife, who just faithfully stays and does all that she needs to do. But it can be wearing. It can be very difficult. And any of you that have had cared, have cared for someone, particularly over a long period of time, it, it does begin to wear. Not that you wouldn't, that you don't want to do it. Not that you wouldn't do it over again. But they need, the caregiver needs prayer as much as the person who's dealing with it. So let's pray for, and, and in your heart and in your mind, pray for those who maybe just need to be, have a special touch, need to have a special boost of strength. Uh, depression can set in. When we're sick for a long time, depression can set in. And we should, so just pray for the encouragement of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit and the peace of the Holy Spirit and the strength of the Holy Spirit to come upon us. We pray specifically for Nels today. We just ask you for, for his body, for his life to continue to be encouraged in the midst of a very hard time. And for Linda, as she takes care of him, the, the man that she has loved for many, many years, give her strength. Help her to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it. It can be very hard and it can be very wearing. But God, you give strength, you give endurance, you give patience. We pray that for her now and for others who may be dealing with this and for other caregivers. We pray for those who have family and friends in nursing homes where they can't visit and, and the struggle of not being able to embrace people. Lord, help us to find ways, um, creative ways to reach out, cards, notes, letters, phone calls, all those things which we can reach out to people even if we can't go there physically. There are many ways. So, Lord, be with us. Help all of us to be caregivers. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your strength to give us. And might we always, always look to you. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right, it's a little over 15, but let's close with a song. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's our deliverer. In him will we trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Go in peace. Go with God.